In this video we're going to look at this wonderful little circuit which is the D-type flip-flop for 4013 and I've got a very simple circuit. I've got an input which is my data just here. I've got an input which is my clock just here. I've got an output representing Q with my green LED and I've written Q in green to remind us. But we all know that we can't describe these sorts of circuits with system diagrams we should really have timing diagrams and luckily I have one. Now I have pre-populated this timing diagram with a data input and a clock input so let's try and copy this timing diagram and see what happens to the output Q. My vertical pink lines just show me where the rising edges are of my clock because the D-type flip-flop only responds to the rising edge of every clock pulse. So I've marked them on with little arrows just to remind us. So let's have a look and see what happens. So we'll work our way along the timing diagram. And the first thing you notice I need to do is keep the data at zero. So it's off and press the clock. And let it off again. So that's that first pulse. Nothing happened to Q. Let's try it again. Second clock pulse comes on. Nothing happens to Q. But during that second clock pulse, what we should have done, if you look at the timing diagram, is press the data. Now watch carefully. Nothing happened to Q. Carrying on along our timing diagram, we let the clock pulse off. We get to here. Data is still high, still on. We're going to press the clock again. Watch carefully what happens. Press the clock. And the output Q comes on and stays on. I've let go of the clock. I'm going to press the clock again while still holding the data down. The output Q doesn't change. And now I'm going to let the data off. The output Q still doesn't change. I'm going to let the clock off. The output Q still doesn't change. So that's what I did just here. The data is now low again. Press the clock again. Watch what happens when I press the clock. The output goes off. Now I need to get to this point here. So I need the data to be high. Press the clock. Notice when I press the data, nothing happened to the output. Press the clock. The output came on. Let the data go at this point just here. Press the clock. Q goes off. Press the clock again. Nothing happens. Press the data. At this point just here, didn't quite get that right. Press the clock. Q comes back on. So in summary, when I press the clock, it looks at the data and says, right, data is zero. When you press the clock, go to zero. And then you make the data high, and you come along and it says, look at data, data is one. When I press the clock, when I press the clock, go to one. There you go. So now the data is zero, press the clock, it goes to zero. Now the data is one, press the clock, goes to one. Notice how Q only changes on the rising edge of the clock. Let's draw in our Q on the timing diagram. Rising edge of the clock, data zero, stays at zero. Rising edge of the clock, data zero, stays at zero. Rising edge of the clock, data is one, Q goes to one. Rising edge of the clock, data is one, stays at one. Rising edge of the clock, data zero, goes to zero. Rising edge of the clock, data is one, goes to one. Rising edge of the clock, data zero, goes to zero. Clock, data zero, stays at zero. Rising edge of the clock, data's one, goes to one. And that's how you do it.